Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Pack one, pick one. Open a pretty nice rare with the Dragonkin Berserker. Not too difficult to get at least one dragon. And if you get more than one, it should be game over. A 2 2 first strike for two mana is also not a bad deal. Plenty of 3 2s in the set that this can hold off. Other good cards Avalanche Caller, great payoff for the snow deck. Behold the Multiverse, great blue common. Also, big fan of the Dwarven Hammer, one of the better equipment in the set. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna stick to the Berserker. It is too bad that we're passing the Dwarven Hammer, which is one of the better cards in the pack. But so it goes. Second pack. So someone took an uncommon. Basalt Ravager is not a bad card at its best in the blue-red deck, but even in like red-green you might end up with a few uh, changelings which can help you get multiple creature types in play. So that could be an option. Uh, Graven Lore, just a fine card draw spell, better in the snow decks, obviously. And then Cyril's Packmate, one of the best commons in the set, especially in green, could be a solid option too. So Ravager keeps us in red. Packmate is maybe slightly better, depending on which deck you played in. Graven Lore could be okay, but I think it's between Ravager and Packmate for me here. And uh, I guess we'll stick to red, no reason to deviate just yet. All right, well, now that we're getting a third pick struggle, after getting past uh, the wolf, we might want to take a look at green here. There's a few playable red cards. Cavalry I like quite a bit. Being able to give haste to our large creatures in a late game is quite nice. There's the Firewalker, excellent. Boast creature too. And Fearless Pup can also be playable in the more aggressive decks. But struggle is a pretty premium removal spell. And yeah, red green if we end up with a few changelings for Ravager could be solid. Iron Verdict, also reasonable removal spell, better in the more controlling decks. And Kaya's Onslaught's also a fine trick, but I think I'm taking struggle here. Ooh. And we get rewarded with Arnie Slays a Troll. Now the first chapter doesn't always line up perfectly, so you might have to wait a few turns before you get a large creature in play to set up the fight, but chapters 2 and 3 are a pretty nice upside here. So, don't see a reason not to take it. Doesn't seem like we're gonna do the snow thing, so Eyesight Troll's gonna be difficult to activate. Run Amok, fine trick, better maybe in the low curve deck. Haggy Mob's also fine creature at 5 if we need a filler, although we would prefer to pick up more giants. So, let's slay some trolls. And yeah, another Ravager, why not? None of these red or green cards are particularly exciting. So, pretty easy Ravager. Pick six. Alright, this is a bit of a miss. Surprised to still see a snow-covered island in here, since those are quite valuable. I could take a Fearless Pup, although I don't even know if I really want it in this deck. Tormentor's Helm, fine for more aggressive decks. We're playing best of one, so not gonna main deck a Broken Wings. I'll just hate draft a Snow Island since it shouldn't be here. Alright, a Snow Mountain on the other hand we could potentially use. That's also pretty late, Behold the Multiverse, seventh pick here. Mammoth Growth could be okay in our deck. I mean, maybe I should just take Behold the Multiverse on the off chance that blue is wide open. Getting that late snow-covered island. Yeah, you know what, let's take Behold. I don't think I'm gonna miss out on a Mammoth Growth too much, and... Sure, snow-covered mountain is on color, but... It doesn't even look like we're gonna do the snow thing to begin with. So I'd rather just take a powerful card in case we do ha end up pivoting into blue. And then... 
probably take the Hagi mob now over Raider and Outrider. All right, perfect. Gladewalker is a changeling, although this pack has a lot of goodies. So Gladewalker would go well with our two copies of Basalt Ravager, although so would Craven Hulk, and it's also a beefy creature to help us fight. The main reason I want Gladewalker is that our curve is pretty high, so this would give us something cheaper. Reason to take a red card is on the off chance that we do end up blue and not green, then having a red card kind of solidifies our red a little bit. I think I'm still leaning Gladewalker here, but can make a reasonable argument for the two red cards, although wow, 10th pick, Serwolf's pack mate. I can't believe it, this card's awesome, so glad to have it. There's also still a snow-covered forest in the pack, and forest especially is probably the most valuable snow-covered land, so not sure what's going on in this draft, but I'm here for it. Cavalry. Fine card too. And maybe we'll play run amok. So it kind of looks like we're settling into a red-green nicely. And the card quality overall is quite high. Didn't think I'm playing any of these. Alright, second pack. Opened an on-color rare, sadly it's not a very good one. Demon Bolt on the other hand is always perfect. So that's an easy pick up here. Some other okay blue cards. Behold, Arcanist, if we end up blue reds, could be okay if we've got a few of the same non creature spells to get back. Like, of course, great if we have multiple Beholds. But uh, let's take the Demon Bolt and move on. Ooh, Burgi, God of Storytelling. This card's awesome too. Horn of Bounty, also an excellent way to. Discard lands in the late game. So let's take Burgi. And then other good cards in the pack. Another Gladewalker, Cavalry, Berserker could be fine. And now we're looking at either Blizzard Brawl or probably another Gladewalker. So Blizzard Brawl is not going to be at its best in our deck since we're not doing the whole snow thing. It's essentially just a uh, prey upon one mana sorcery to let two creatures fight, which, you know, is fine because it's a cheap card, but we already have Slays a Troll and uh, Struggle for Skemfar, which are probably just better versions of that effect. So I think I'm leaning Gladewalker here just to kind of solidify our two drops, get another Changeling to make our Basalt Ravagers better. Lindworm could also be a fine curve topper, although it's pretty interchangeable with other expensive cards. Alright, this is a bit of a blank, so I'm probably just gonna rare draft. Don't think we're gonna splash a third color here. Looks like red green's offering us everything we need. So don't see reason to make our mana base worse. So I'll just take a random rare for the collection. And then, yeah. Sinner Heart Giant could be okay. It is a giant, so I guess it helps if we want to get multiple giants for Ravager. It's a fine finisher if we need something expensive. Could also look at the Rhymewood Falls in case we wanted to splash Behold the Multiverse. But again, I don't think that's really necessary. Mammoth Growth also a potential pump spell we could play. All right. Well, there's some goodies here. Uh, Masked Vandals, excellent. It's a changeling for our Ravagers. 1-3 blocker against aggressive decks is fine. And then in a late game, offers quite a bit of utility dealing with artifacts and enchantments. There's also the Highland Forest, and mana fixing, even in a two-color deck, is always a welcome addition. So this one's close. I um, think I'm leaning Vandal just because the first copy is quite valuable, but... I would like the forest quite a bit too. Yeah, let's take a Vandal. Alright, now I can take a Lindworm. Glimpse would be great if we were doing the blue-red giants thing, or even blue-green changelings. But I don't think we need an Elder Leaf. 
So we'll take a Lindworm. All right. There's another Vandal. Probably don't want a second one as much as a first Snakeskin Veil. Fine trick to protect our big creatures. Finn, also fine card. And also fights quite well, so it would play well with Arnie Slays a Troll and our Struggle. So, probably take Finn here over Snakeskin Veil. And then... I guess maybe a Mammoth Growth. Do we want a second Haggy Mob? I guess we don't have a ton of creatures at 5 yet. So I could see taking a second Mob just to have some more top end. I didn't think we need the Frost for Ramp. Although I could use some 3 mana creatures, which is something our curve is still missing. So I could take a Berserker, or I could take yet another Gladewalker to make these Basalt Ravagers awesome. I'm also kind of into the idea of having awesome Basalt Ravagers and just be Flame Tongue Kavu. Yeah, let's take another Gladewalker. Wow, we wield the Blizzard. Well, definitely taking it now. Plays well with our Finn, which we just picked up. I already have one in the sideboard. We'll just take an uncommon for the vault. All right, maybe we'll play the growth. All right, so last pack could use some three mana creatures to fill out the curve. And then, of course, any removal spells we see, we will take. But our deck looks pretty decent. Not sure if we're going to play run amok. We just have overall high card quality and a few synergies here with our Ravagers. Burgi can help us take over the late game if we play the artifact half. And wow, even got the Highland Forest last pick, pretty much. Alright, so we're definitely doing it. And, uh, hmm. Well, we could rare draft a Kaya, which is tempting, but there's also Demon Bolt and a Bloodline Pretender, which are both awesome for the deck. Probably gonna take the Demon Bolt. Pretender would be awesome to wheel since we have so many changelings and giants to synergize with it. But, uh, yeah, I think Demon Bolt's the pick. I'm not counting on Pretender wheeling, but you never know, and otherwise, like a Forest or a Lindworm could still be okay. Alright. Another Mythic Rare passes by. Craven Hulk's probably too good for the deck to pass up here. Although I could take the Recluse since we're missing three drops. Yeah, maybe that's not such a crazy idea, although it looks like the card quality is going to be high enough that we're not going to need to play Recluse in this deck, even if it would fit the curve better. No, I think we should still take the three just for curve. even though Hulk is a better card. All right. You know what, let's just rare draft and then we'll probably wield the Recluse anyway. Now I can take the Packmate or Firewalker. Firewalker would be better for curve. Uh, Packmate is the better card. So another interesting decision here. How good is Firewalker even in this deck? It does have a lot of awkward hits. If we hit like a 6 or 7 drop without a mana to cast it, it's not great. And let's just take the pack mate. It's just too good to pass up. Ooh, nice Zvella. Perfect. In our colors, and it's a 3 drop, and it helps us ramp. That's everything we need. Also just a fun card to play with. Alright, definitely taking Seeker here. Fills out our curve. Rune of Might could be nice with our non-trampling creatures like Lindworm and Haggy Mob, but Seeker is just too important for curve. Struggle for Skemfar seems nice. Provoke the Trolls is also playable, but I think Struggle is going to be better for us. And another pack mate, sure.
and nothing here that's super interesting i guess forest is just a nice upgrade for blizzard brawl although elven bow is kind of like a three drop and fits our curve and gives us a mana sink late so seems fine plus our deck is pretty weak to flying creatures and this gives reach well we got the forest on the wheel probably don't need a second lindworm so probably just take forest as an upgrade over a basic regular forest and there we go we wield recluse so I don't have to feel bad about rare drafting although it's probably not going to make the final cut if I had to guess all right so our deck looks quite strong I'm gonna have to make some difficult cuts So Recluse can probably go. I like all the two drops. Growth can probably go. Haggy Mob. So this is 25 plus two lanes. So I still need to make two cuts. I kind of like the top end cards to give us a finisher. Could maybe shave one Gladewalker. Although I do like the card quite a bit in this deck. And it is true that we have triple pack mate, which also gives us a two mana play if we can foretell it early. So it's not like we need all these two mana creatures. All right, one Glade Walker can go. Cavalry seems nice, giving some of our big creatures haste. Berserker's awesome, Finn's good with all the fight spells, and then we've got our changelings to go with Ravager. Couple fight spells, double Dima Bolt, triple Packmate. So the card quality is incredibly high in this deck. And then I guess we need to make one more cut still. Yeah, maybe Hangy Mob can go. Don't have any synergy with it. This would be awesome with like the Black Rune giving a Death Touch. We don't have any boast synergy in the deck. And taking out one toughness creatures doesn't seem incredibly important. Although it can maybe combine with damage from Ravager or Demon Bolt to take out something bigger. I don't think I want to cut a land. We do have triple pack mate, which cantrips, so that makes cutting a land more feasible, I suppose. But it's also a deck that doesn't mind double spelling. When we do get to draw so many cards with packmates, Svella is also nice mana sink. We've got Bow we can move around. And Berserker is essentially 5 mana ability. So we've got a lot of expensive things to spend our mana on. I guess we do have Burgi, which can help boast twice with Haggy Mob. So there's a little bit of synergy there, but I'm guessing this card is a little bit more exciting as the legendary artifact side as opposed to the creature although i could easily see scenarios where we just want to curve out but this seems like a bit more of a late game deck um let's go to haggy mob i think we'll be fine and then mana distribution a little bit more green then red also, we don't need a ton of double green or double red. So, an even split's probably acceptable. Alright, pack attack it is. A reasonable hand. If we draw land, then we can maybe get Berserker in play earlier. Although, it's also a card we don't mind playing later. Alright, we found the land. Because if we didn't draw land, then foretelling Packmate to help us draw a card and maybe hit our land drop could be better. Although, now that we're facing Usher, I probably just want to get the first tracker in play. Ravager can also eventually kill Usher. So Seeker just trades, but it can block the 1-1. One, one. 
interesting choice. I mean, obviously we just want to draw land 4, naturally. But maybe next turn I can attack, boast, get a forest and then foretell. Alright. I think that's probably still the plan. They can trade for their Usher. Then we can play Ravager, which can kill this. This is going to keep growing, so that's going to potentially be an issue, but... Yeah, opponent just takes it. Get the Snow Forest. Do we want to struggle or pack mates? Thinking pack mates. We did draw the land, which would have made struggle a little bit better. So I can Ravager, kill Usher, and then just try and double block Braggart. I guess we even have two humans, so it could even deal two damage, but still not enough to really do what we want. Yeah, seems fine. We just got to play defense here. Hopefully no trick. Alright, and now we can try and take over with our late game, which is looking quite strong. So, pack made firsts. Sadly can't double foretell. Now I probably foretell a fight spell here. Uh oh. Well, luckily my opponent is lacking a second spell, otherwise their deck could do some powerful things. We just keep drawing pack mates, so that's nice. Well, um, can struggle, kill Clarion Spirits. What else can we do? Do we just want to struggle for four mana here and then foretell another pack mate? Don't hate that idea. Just to be mana efficient. Could also fight with a Berserker, but if they had removal, they would have just cast it. Yeah, more cards that care about double spelling without a second spell. Alright, we've got Wolf, Berserker, Giant Wizard, so can play another Packmate and then Ravager the Infernal Pets. Alright, this is just going to be a massacre. Let's see. If I play Burgi... 3 mana, 4 mana left. Struggles essentially free. 
So I could go struggle plus pack mate. That seems okay. And then probably fight with the biggest pack mate. We've got the full pack assembled. And our point explodes. Alright, this hand's pretty bad. This is better. Hmm, what to do here? Probably just play my two drop. Can foretell a demon bolt. Opponent on Grixis. Sadly, we did put that masked vandal on the bottom. So is this a hand where we want to run out Burgi on turn 3? Could be okay. Will help me empty my hand faster. And we're pretty far from casting Horn. Alright, so play Gladewalker. Putting a count from Burgi doesn't save it from Demon Bolt, so I'm probably better off making a 2 2. And then we can foretell probably the struggle. Alright, Agar. Definitely something we want to try and deal with. So. Can struggle with Burgi. If something goes wrong, we still have Demon Bolt we can cast. Mistwalker, we can kill. So I might as well do it now. Ooh, Packmate. So hit for six, play Packmate. Hope there's no disdainful stroke. Hope 
Hopefully no sweepers. Well, that's a sweeper. Although it doesn't kill my guardian. Fine hand. Turn two, we gotta decide between packmate or cavalry. Even have a snow forest to go with our blizzard brawl, but I don't even know if her deck is capable of getting two, three snow permanents. That's fine. Probably just play Seeker. Could foretell Packmates. Next room, play Packmates. Maybe Arnie. Slays a troll, but it doesn't line up great against Augury Raven. So we can attack with Seeker, play Packmates, don't really want to boast. Opponent doesn't appear to have any snow land, so the Yeti is not a huge threat, and we can also potentially trade with Packmate. Could have not played my land first, I suppose, to maybe incentivize them in trading if they overvalue my boast. Maybe we can wait to play Sinner Heart Giant before we use our fight spells. At least now we don't feel bad about fighting with our tapped packmate. So, might want to slay the troll, kill Raven, and then next turn. I'll even have the mana for Giant, thanks to the one red from the second chapter. Seems decent. So, let us... Attack. Slay the troll. Post. Not our Yeti. This will become an issue if they can actually uh, get a snow land in play. So I will play defense for now in case I can answer giant. But the next one we should gain a ton of life too. A runeforged champion. Alright, if they have the flying rune, we're gonna need to kill whatever they enchant. Instead it gets a rune of sustenance. That's okay. Oh, 
Well, it doesn't seem like a game where I'm gonna need Horn, but... Yeah, there's a bit of an embarrassment of riches here. I think we should still prioritize killing the Yeti. So if I fight a Yeti... I mean, I don't mind attacking if they want to trade their entire board for it. I guess we can attack first. That's fine. They did pick up a snow-covered island, so the Yetis are technically unblockable here. Yeah, I guess we'll keep Burgia's Horn, just in case the game somehow drags out. Let's say my opponent plays a Doomscar to wipe the board. I guess having Horn is a nice leftover. When we're this far ahead, we just gotta think, like, how can we possibly lose this? Which rares can my opponent somehow draw? Sure. What do we do here? Do we just run out Finn? Are we gonna try and kill with poison by putting counters on Finn? Eh, sure. Not sure if I want to run a Gladewalker as a 2 2. Alright, now Elven Bow makes it easier. They might have a Demon Bolt here, foretold. The poison counters are more psychological than actually relevant to the gameplay. Agar. Alright. Send in Finn. Could also Glade Walker and then Blizzard Brawl, although it's pretty bad if they have a Demon Bolt. And then maybe just play Pac-Mate. Because they might have wanted to play Agar before casting the Demon Bolts to get the one extra card out of it. Yep. Now I could still go Glade Walker, Counter on Elf, and then Blizzard Brawl. Is that better? That way they don't get to Glimpse. Yeah, maybe that's the play. They had a second one, so didn't quite work out as we would have liked. Bounce spell, which is pretty nice against the token. Alright, feels like we're a bit behind here. Agar providing a lot of value. And so, does Glimpse. 
Got to draw more pack mates. Do get to drop a Lindworm. Invasion. Yeah, so they seem to have a very synergistic blue-red giants deck. All right, there's Packmate. So I could Vandal to get rid of the invasion before they draw. It's probably decent. Six mana for Firewalker and strategic planning. Could still have a Demon Bolt, which would draw a card with Agar. If they wait, we can punish them by bolting Agar in response. So now they don't get to draw their card. Ooh. Calamity Bearer. That's a scary card. So this is 3 to equip. Although it would let Seeker potentially attack. Opponents at 16. Lindworm would just trade for bear unless we, I guess, equip it with a bow. So my play could just be Lindworm pass and then next turn equip. Yeah, it feels better than equipping Seeker here. Ooh, Arcanist. Do they have another Demon Bolt somewhere? They do, wow. So they had three. Yeah, our opponent's deck seems quite strong. They're happy with their two cards. Ooh, now Struggle is great. So we can take out Calamity Bearer. So I can... Struggle with the Lindworm. Probably doesn't get to attack this turn. But at least it doesn't die. Seems fine. Can also equip the Lindworm, but it should survive here thanks to the counter. So 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, it's the only thing that can really attack profitably, although I could equip Seeker, I suppose, and then... That can maybe still attack. If I fought with the Seeker, it would have been a trade, so it seems better to keep my Seeker. Although that would have allowed me to attack with the Lindworm. I think keeping Seeker alive is probably more relevant. So they got a Demon Bolt. So if their plan is double block plus bolts, I guess they can kill the worm, but we get to kill their entire board. So that's still not too bad if I put the bow here, goes up to 9 toughness, then 4 plus 4 would not kill it. So let's just send a worm. So this goes on top, sure. It's a fine draw. I 
guess there's no reason to play my land at this point since we know our next draw step is not a land. Although I guess Seeker could technically draw another land, although can't really attack into Arcanist here. So maybe should have still played a land anyway. They don't have a snow land for Yeti. So just play a Lindworm. I'll play the forest. And then, yeah. Hope to draw some more of our top end cards, removal spells. Can maybe open up an attack. This would be a good spot to draw Burgi, so we can play Horn, which would be a reason to hold some lands in hand, although Seeker can always provide an extra one. Opponent's gonna foretell their Demon Bolt, and yeah, there's Horn. So... They've got a Demon Bolt. We still want them to lose two creatures in the process by equipping the Worm, because otherwise they can just trade Bolt and Raider for Worm, which doesn't seem like it's enough. Although that does mean I don't get to attack with the Seeker and get a land for Horn, but we can still play Horn. And I'm fine if this trades for two or three cards here. So, probably kill the Yeti. Or do I? Nah, I guess killing the Arcanist means the Seeker can attack a little bit better, although we still have Elven Bow. I don't think it matters too much in the grand scheme of things. And let's kill a 2 5. So we're gonna have to Demon Bolts and we'll play Horn. Ooh, Tombscar Titan and an all-out attack. Well, that's a straightforward block. Do we want to trade Seeker for Yeti? Probably not. Take 9, we're at 28. Can afford it. That's pretty good too. Can have two creature types, so not quite enough to uh, kill Yeti, but let's see here. Attack first, boast, see what we get with Horn. Two more lands. I think we hold Ravager. And then we can turn this into a blocker. Sure. Well, they're making it easy for us to boast and get horn value. Activate horn first, even though we give a little bit more information, just in case I need all my mana. So I can still boast, play land, play giants. can also activate Horn multiple times in the same turn if we wanted to, but no real reason here. And now Ravager can deal 3 damage since we have Giants, Giant, and Giants. Alright, my opponent can also 
deal quite a bit of damage here. They've got three, or no, two giants and two berserkers. So that's gonna kill Seeker. But we still have the three damage for Ravager. So that's nice. All right. So Ravager, kill Yeti. Maybe I should use Horn first here. Well, now we're just going off. This one's four damage. Could have also slayed a troll, but wanted to get my value. I mean, if they double block here, they're still taking a million damage. Seems fine. All right, sweet. Sure. This looks good. Turn two, what's our play? Facing Sentinel. Against a green deck, making Berserker larger with the uh, counters might not be a bad idea. Okay, maybe Glade Walker plus Brawl. So against green white, they could have foretold the uh, five damage spell, which you know could be a reason to play slightly differently here. So that's one of the challenges of playing with and against the foretell cards. So let's say we don't want to tap our berserker until we can uh, boast it. Then I guess we can just foretell a, a struggle here and pass. Don't know if it's worth missing out on all that damage just to potentially play around Iron Verdict, but it could easily be worth it. We do have a Changeling, so I could already boast next turn if we just play Gladewalker and pass. Could also brawl to remove an extra blocker here to make it more likely that Berserker gets a clean attack. It's kind of going all in. If they have a different removal spell for Berserker, we get punished. So I think we'll kind of split the difference a little bit. Make a 3-3 Berserker pass to play around Iron Verdict and then next turn attack and maybe boast. All right. So they might have an Iron Verdict, but we'll get a Dragon, which seems worth it. Alright, no interaction. Yeah, Glade Walker makes our Berserker even better. Well, that's a turn for win. Alright, sweet. Pack attack gets the job done. And yeah, we've got some nice rares that definitely carried us. Let's crack some packs. Tundra, Fumeral, pack one, pick one, what do we like? Fumeral's like decent, just three mana for damage. It's worse than Demon Bolts by quite a large margin, but still pretty decent. Um, pillar, potentially worth building around and going into the Snow Archetype. There's some other playable cards here, but nothing particularly exciting. So it's like Fumarole as kind of the safe, unexciting pick. Pillar, 
potentially more powerful, but it's a bigger commitment since you need to draft snow. Ooh, Chariot is an absolute bomb. Can't think of many better rares to open. There's some other playable cards here. Rootless You. Can maybe search up a Lindworm. Frost Augur, you need to be very dedicated snow before it becomes worth it. So I would kind of advise against first picking Augur and going all in, but this is a great card to pick up if you're already in the snow archetype. And then Packmate. Saw the power of Packmate in our draft, just an awesome green common. Cosima, God of the Voyage, is also quite strong. In Limited, you're probably more interested in the creature half, and I guess same goes for Constructed, really. But having the flexibility to play Omen Kill is just a bonus. And this can easily take over the game if you can hit a few line drops. Tyrite Sanctum. Pretty fun with changelings that you can turn into indestructible gods with the second ability. Didn't think you were going to be playing this in a deck with only two legendaries. Anything else in the pack that jumps out? This pack's pretty bad. We've got one of the worst cards with Open the Omen Pass. Dual Strike's not particularly exciting. Some expensive cards. Mentor's fine in like a green elf deck, but it's not a card you want to first pick. And this is one of the weaker activated lands. So this pack's pretty awful. Do we have a consensus on the best mythic in the set? There's a lot of powerful ones for sure. Ideally the best mythic would be something you can play multiple decks, so like a colorless card or a single color card as opposed to a multicolor one. Although the multicolor ones tend to be a little bit more powerful, like Koma, the blue-green serpent, is quite strong. So yeah, pick your favorite mythic. Although Mistwalker is also a card that's quite powerful as it takes multiple boxes of being a giant for the blue-red giants deck, excellent in blue-green shapeshifters. It's a 1-4 flyer and there's a lot of 3-powered flyers in the set that this can block. And once you get to the late game, you can just activate this three times and attack for four. So it's also a great finisher. So Mistwalker is definitely one of my early contenders for one of the better commons in the set. Cardur is also a fun one. Cosmos Charger. Pretty decent card, even if you don't have a ton of Fortel, just as a... 3-3 Flash Flyer that you can potentially play on turn 3 already. Sadly didn't get to see Zvella in our games even though we drafted it. So that's a, a nice red-green card. Kaya's Onslaught can potentially lead to some blowouts, especially combined with other pump spells. Just imagine having foretold Kaya's Onslaught and Mammoth Growth and then all of a sudden casting both on an unblocked creature for a ton of extra damage. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.